So 2022 was not a good year in the market and 23 seems to be somewhat shaky, somewhat difficult for some of those companies, right? We saw Algonquin and VF Corporation cutting down their dividend and I'm expecting more bad news to come as interest rate continues to have a weight on balance sheet of companies. Thing is, if you wanna avoid those companies, if you wanna make sure that you invest in great solid businesses, one thing that you could do is to look at cash flow because we all know that cash is king. However, when you look at financials, it's pretty hard to understand where cash comes in and where cash comes out and then the payout ratios and all of that. So today we're going to demystify cash flow. Dividend Investors, bonjour. My name is Mike Yehu and I'm the founder of Dividend Stocks Rocks. I'm also a passionate investor and I'm here to help you invest with more conviction so you can enjoy your retirement. So today we're doing a deep dive on cash flow. So when you look at the cash flow statement, you will find three sections. So the first one is the most important one in my opinion, the cash from operations. So in simple words, it's everything that comes in the company minus everything that comes out. So it's really what you generate from operations. So you're, you're selling tables. Well, each time that you sell a table, you receive money and then you have to turn around and you have to pay your suppliers, your, your, your employees and so on. So it's what is left at the end of those operation. That is the cash from operations. The second type of cash flow is the cash from financing because if you need to buy a new manufacturer plans or if you want to make an acquisition, chances are you're not going to buy all in cash and you'll need financing. So when you contract a new debt, it will be a positive cash flow that comes into your bank account. So that is a positive thing. When you're paying down debt, well, the cash from financing will be negative because that's money going out of your bank account pay to pay the, the, the bank or the debentures. So the last type of cash flow is coming from the cash from investing. So whenever a company is investing in a project, capital expenditure, well then you'll see a negative amount because it's money going out of the business. It's obviously going out for a good reason. You're investing in the future and in the end, you expect that future projects to generate more cash flow and become more profitable going over time. But in the meantime, when you look at the cash flow statement, it will be a negative. On the other side, when you're selling an investment, then you receive some money back. So it is it could be interesting as well to see how it fluctuates. But the most important part is the cash from operation. Now, a lot of investors will say, well, Mike, that's a good thing. So why don't you just look at cash from operation instead of earnings per share, right? So let's take an example with Fortis. Why did I select Fortis? Well, Fortis utility, very stable. Um, and what I like about that, it's 49 years of consecutive dividend increases. So it is a company that knows a thing or two about managing cash flow and being able to generate growth and at the same time reward shareholders every single year. So the first graph we're looking at is the combination of cash flow operation, revenue and earnings per share over the past 10 years. Interestingly, you can see that cash flow operation and revenue are pretty much end in end and they're growing about at the same pace. Obviously, there's like some like some distortion at one point, but what you can see here is the earnings per share lags a lot behind. Why? Well, when you think about the business model for Fortis, they invest massively in new uh, projects and they have a huge capital expenditure. So they make acquisition or they invest massively in their projects to generate more growth in the future. So those investments could translate into impairment in, um, in value of their projects. It could also uh, affect amortization and those are non-cash items. This means that it reduces the earnings so the company pay less in taxes but it's not a real cash flow changes. For example, imagine that your house loses $50,000 in value on the market right now, but you have no intention of selling. So you started the year at $500,000 of worth for your, for your house value, and now it's at 450. If you were a business and you look at your financial statement, you would declare a loss of $50,000. But did your bank account count change? No. Is your ability to pay your mortgage change? Not at all. It's just that if you need to sell your house right away, then you're gonna sell it $50,000 less. So for a business, it will affect their earnings per share, but for a person, it doesn't. So when you look at the cash flow, it's exactly the same way.
Now, a lot of investors will tell me, yeah, but Mike, it's interesting to look at the cash flow operation, but it's even better to look at the free cash flow because the name says it all, free cash flow. Well, it's all the cash flow that is completely free in your bank account. So now let's take a look at Fortis again. So we look at Fortis, we have the cash flow operation, the revenue, the earnings, and the free cash flow. And as you can see, the free cash flow is going up and down all the time. And it's really hard to wrap your head around anything here. And as you can see, the other three lines are now almost flats because the fluctuation of the free cash flow is completely ridiculous. And this is the problem with most businesses is one quarter, they're gonna have a lot of free cash flow and the next quarter, they're gonna invest massively and you have a huge capex and then they go back into negative territories so you have those fluctuation which at one point it's really hard to wrap your own around it and make some clear analysis and this is one of the major problem of the free cash flow so we would all love to have a business that generate free cash flow constantly every quarter growing every quarter so then it will be the perfect business unfortunately it's very hard to find and most of the time depending on the year you'll ne it will be almost impossible to find so here's the reason why in this graph i have combined the cash flow operation the free cash flow and the capital expenditure because the free cash flow is all the cash flow that is being generated minus the capital expenditure, but they do not consider the debt. So here's the thing, Fortis is generating tons of cash flow, but they're also adding a tons of capital expenditure. They're investing massively in new projects and acquisition and so on, as I mentioned earlier. This is their type of business. And it's just sound for a business to invest in their future, right? So what they do is they're thinking, if I invest today, those projects are going to generate in five, 10, 15 years from now, generating stronger cash flow so my business can continue to grow, I can continue to increase my dividend, and I can continue to thrive and go through um, all kinds of economic environment. But when you look at the cash flow, the free cash flow, well, then you see that sometimes it goes in negative territories because the company needs debt to finance those uh, projects. So they do not generate enough cash flow from their operation to automatically finance everything that they want to achieve. Moving to the next graph, now you see the free cash flow, the capital expenditure, and the long-term debt. And as you can see, as the capital expenditures continue to grow and the free cash flow is struggling at one point, well, what comes back in? Cash, uh, cash from financing, so more debt is coming up. So the debt will be a good thing, a sound thing for a short period of time. However, for the long run, you don't wanna see Fortis continuing to have negative free cash flow and higher capital expenditure that will require more and more debts. That is like building a mountain of debt that one day it has to be paid. So it was a smart thing for most utilities to benefit from the past 10 years of very low interest rate and to, to, to maximize those, the, this leverage to invest in new projects. But right now, what we will want to see for most companies, especially those that, have, that, are, capital expensive, that are capital intensive, is you wanna see Fortis starting, maybe investing a little bit less in CapEx and generating stronger cash flow so it can pay off the debts and continue to grow anyway. So this situation is not a source of concern right now. However, going forward, we need to see something going down at one point. So we need Fortis to be able to turn around and actually do what they have expected to do, which means generating more cash flow so they can pay off their debts and have a robust balance sheet. So as you can see from this video, it is really hard to track down cash from operation and free cash flow and make your head around it because it will fluctuate a lot more. It's normal. It's all about the ins and the outs of a business bank account. So this is the reason why I decided to continue to look at the earnings per share instead of the cash flow. When you look at a bunch of companies that I've taken just to show you what, is, what it looks like in terms of variation. So we have here Apple, Church and Dwight, Lockheed Martin, Royal Bank and Canadian National Railway. And you can see that if you look at the cash from operation, Besides Apple, that is pretty much steady all the time, all the others are going down and up and down and up, and it's really hard to wrap your head around that. However, if you look at the revenue and the earnings per share, well, over the past 10 years, it's a lot easier to make up your mind and see that it's growing almost constantly. 
So does it mean that you should completely discard cash from operation and other cash flow metrics? Absolutely not. In fact, what it really mean is start your research with more accounting based metrics such as the revenue and the earnings per share and once you have filtered down and you're looking at the business model you're starting to look the company and you're just like okay so I understand the business model i think it's great they have great basic metrics now you go and look at the debt level you look at the cash uh, from operation the free cash flow and then you can make a little bit more sense out of those metrics that are a little bit more volatile than earnings per share and revenue. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you're looking for a list of companies to start your research with a strong dividend triangle and potentially strong cash flow from operation, I invite you to download the dividend rockstar list in the, in the link description below. So you'll be able to download that list in Excel spreadsheet covering both Canadian and US market. You'll be able to start your research. Obviously they have like 300 stocks over there. So you'll need to add a little bit more metrics uh, for your research, but it's uh, definitely a good starting point. And you will find companies that increase their revenue, increase their earnings and increase their dividend potentially the cash flow operation will be also very good all right let me know in the comments if you have any other questions about cash flow and until next thursday don't forget to stay invested